All right, yes, you welcome back to the balance ahead of teletainment this morning. Now, if you check your go go, you go see this next bus stop now something will consign me, it consign you, even consign your cousin, your mama, your pale. Everybody where they your house because this same person now familiar face we don't consider until this our cars for on top of the good morning Nigeria show. Now they begin one project where they come out and one of the goals for that project now to do it in now to train traditional bet attendants. Now this one means that people with it for the rural areas, when not them they make sure say the people mama them where they want bomb picking when time reach now them be the first people that they call before they think of hospital. That not even even did that local government area before they, they even think of better uh, health primary health care center if even they available and if they work now this better attendance and they come outside see i'm say now important thing where they need to do for inside our country that's now we we'll get this very cadet guest from warif um, in the person of miss chichi welcome to the studio once Thank again you. Ms. Chichi. good morning good morning now looking at our mortality rate in terms of um, um the time we woman they take bomb picking we see i'm say for our country nigeria actually get one of the highest mortality rates in the world not just in africa and they, they come, they come, some people they come outside, they believe on saying that because we'll be on the, on that developing country. Some people they talk to maybe in our government, they get a lot to play in this particular role. But oh, now, now organization will be right if don't come outside, set a standard. We'll be saying, now train as a last year one, not when you become on top of the show, yeah. we'll be train 500 traditional birth That's attendants. Yes. Una do last year, and that project has been done, sorted and done. Yeah. So now, una, and also una get another project with the on ground now. Tell us about this project. Okay, thank you so much. You know, say for what if waiting with do now to, you know, help survivors of rape and sexual assault, you know, give them the services where they need to heal, medical services, legal aid, shelter, and different other support where they feel require. You know, so for the gatekeepers project where we train these better attendants. The name of the project yes, of last year. The gatekeepers, gatekeepers project, project okay. yes. So we train these better attendants on how they take identify cases of sexual violence for their community or rape, for instance, you know, how they fit they document these cases and also refer them to Warif for treatment. So last year, like you talk, we don't train 500 and, you know, the project lasts for one year. We don't start again this year by training another 500 better attendants. Last year, we trained 500 additional better attendants from 15 local government areas. You know, so this year again, we get another grant from the same organization, Aspire Coronation Trust Foundation, ACT Foundation. You know, because then she said the project stay very laudable and they want us to make we reach more women. And even these traditional better attendants also say they want to make we go other local governments to train more of these better attendants. Because like you talk, women will get belay or even young girls before they think of say they won't go hospital. Now these women then see them as respected, you know, members of their community. So now these women then they go meet. That's why we decided to make we train them on how they fit help us identify these signs of gender-based violence for their community. Help these women and girls and sometimes children because when they see cases of children with their rape, you know, help these children document the cases and also refer them come worry for treatment and other support with them if you need. Now, in addition to the treatment, because we know see a lot of them, they fear to go back to their mama house, especially the young teenagers, and looking at the statistics we'll get on top of teenage pregnancy for our country, it's even on the rise yeah. as we speak. And knowing, say, um, a lot of these children, did they hide, did they get shame, um, stigmatization, that sure. be the end, that be the end product for a lot of this um these children or these teenagers or this young mom, these teen moms, how worry if they take help in making sure, say, stigmatization for inside this local government, for inside these areas where these children, they even for inside township, because for also for Lagos here, we still they get people with they, mm -hmm. they stigmatize um, them, although some people are trying to turn into baby mama slaying things. Yeah. But how worry if they take commot stigmatization okay, from so these kind of scenarios? We they, we they encourage them, make them speak up, you know, but like you talk, some people, because of the stigmatization, they won't come out. But we they let them know, say, shame, no, they, especially when we say the teenage girl will get belly or the young girl will get, get belly, and as a result of rape, we they encourage them, say, just come. And our services for war if not free of charge. So when they come, some of these people, they need shelter. We don't get shelter for war if. What they do, we say, we they give them referrals to different organizations where we do in collaborations with. We house these girls, pending the time we see them deliver the child. You know, for some, the family, if you say, they no mind, they go keep the picking. You know, so we go say fine. Any support where we feel give them, depending the time, maybe the girl need to learn certain skills so that she will feel financially independent when she born the pekin. We they also enroll her for trainings like that. You know, and some people go come say they no one keep the belly, but we know they in support of abortion. It is against our policy. You know, we they encourage them. Say we understand. Say maybe now as a result of this rape, this thing don't happen. But you know, if you end your life as a result of that, more if you come out of you, if you still get hope, say better thing will come out regardless of what thing don't happen to you. So we they give them different support, shelter. 
um, legal aid for some who want to pursue the case, and sometimes we train them for vocational skills and different things with them, feeling to make them financially independent. You already answered the next question where I want to ask in oh, cases okay. in the situation of abortion with some, because mm. a lot of these young people no go won't keep the pregnancy. Mm. They actually prefer to terminate them um, mm. for reasons best known to them and, of course, to all of us waiting for you. Yeah. Stigmatization is also one of yeah. the reasons why they become a time. But you already answered that question. Now, we could look at the, the challenges the challenges we will be faced on the project will be do last year mm -hmm. and what will be do this year tell us some because i know say it be like say security um, agents also they involved yes, in making yeah. sure say this project will they do if they are successful and as efficient as possible thank you so from last year after we finished the project we go back to get feedback from you know this traditional better attendance to find out how this project don't take impact on our work for our communities. And you know, aside from accidents, saying a very good project, now people don't be more comfortable to speak out, knowing, say, a place like War if they wouldn't feel get support without paying for any, anything. Our services are completely free, you know. One of the things where we see, where we say major challenge to go, still be culture of silence. A lot of people still know they're comfortable enough to come talk. And sometimes now even the family, even when the girl, they're ready to talk about them. Now the family go say, I beg, no talk. Maybe now the papa now ain't raped the girl. You know, them go say, I beg, you know, if you talk this kind of thing, people here outside saying, your papa raped you, now very shameful thing. So we see they battle with that culture of silence. You know, we need people to you know, say, this thing not be something today ashamed of. You know, come out to talk about it because the child that don't rape need help. This thing now, long-term damage if they don't come seek for help immediately. We don't get cases where we say, Bella even still day very, me, I feel say that one is still small thing where you feel managed because Bella, you feel give it to the child and all, you know. But we don't get cases where we say, at the end of the day, when we check the girl, you don't get STI, HIV don't enter the matter. You know those things where we say now, lifelong damage. You know, some, the psychological effects now, if for a very long time, it takes continuous counseling for them for, to so feel come out of, you know, that kind of a thing. So another challenge, again, when we face now, the issue of the reporting process, especially with regards to prosecution. You know, some of the best attendants come out to talk, say, ah, say at times, these young girls, oh, the first point of call now, maybe police station or general hospital, and some of these um, police stations don't get gender desk. And gender desk now, the units in the police station, said they don't train them on how to handle cases of, say, gender-based violence. Maybe they rape women, the woman can't report. They don't train these police officers on how to handle them. Or maybe domestic violence, my husband beats me, the woman go gender desk. You know, they don't train these people on how to handle them. But some of these stations, when you get gender desk, they, they meet with officers. We say, when the girl come, they go ask her, say, what do you wear? Uh, why you follow the boy, go? Uh, you say, why you work out for night? And all those questions where we say, you know, really day relevant. So they ask survival of rape. So what do we can't decide to do now? Say, for this cycle, this one will they run now, now to train 100 police officers. These officers then will come from the same local government where we don't train this better attendance. So that we, we can teach these officers on how they, they need to understand how sensitive this case of rape and gender-based violence, different, different forms of gender-based violence, you know, how sensitive it is. How they're supposed to take attend to these young ladies when they come, listen with, to, to them, you know, with compassionate hearts, you know, because if to say that their daughter that kind of thing happened to how them will feel, you know. So basically, what we want to try to do with, for this training now to help them enlighten these officers, whether they get gender desk or not, but enlighten these 100 police officers on how they fit take handle these cases of gender-based violence or rape when the girl come to their office so that they're going to say, they're supposed to listen to the girl, they're supposed you know, show sympathy when the girl come, say, ah, this thing don't happen. Then also make sure, say, the reporting process and prosecution starts immediately. All right, that's not very, not very good information we would give out right now. Um, that's something we very important for inside our community, but especially for the rural area. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to need to still keep it because I get questioned in terms of this culture of silence mm. and the way forward. But we're going to need to pass more break right now. By the time we come back, we'll still get Miss Chichi in the building representing Warif, talking about the project we get for local government areas in Lagos, in Nigeria. Stay with us. All right, yes, you welcome back to the Balance Ahead of Teletainment this morning. Now, we're still getting the House of Representative of Women at RICS International Foundation, will be Warif, and the person we'll get for House, she be they talk about the project where they get, the one where they don't do, and the one where they, they do now, and the, one of them where they're ongoing as we speak um, today for Inside Shomulu, and the next project where they come out for Inside February. Miss Chichi still there in the building with us. More, welcome once again, Miss Chichi. Thank you. So, very quickly, let's just um, to just wrap it up, uh, make we just talk about the project where you get. Um, the one, the one way you don't, you don't do, but you never, you still they finish, the, you wrap up today. Um, waiting the project they all about okay, also. So now still best attendance. So the best traditional best attendance then get two categories. Then get the faith based and then get the core. 
So the faith based, now those ones will be saying, then they use holy water, then they pray, you know, now the Christian part. Then the core, now the traditional people will be saying, then they use herbs, then they use incantation and different things, you know, when they attend to women, we get belly. So we don't, we suppose train 500, but not be all of them come. So the remaining one, 104, now we they train today for Shomolo. For Shomolo uh, yes. access. Okay, yeah. so so um, the next one where they come out, when did it happen and who be the, which category of people would they actually be involved? So for February, we're going to train the police officers, the 100 police officers who I mentioned. So by February of 2019, we're going to train the 100 police officers from different LJs, about six LJs in Lagos State. government areas in yeah. Lagos State. Fantastic. So for people who want to join this course, some people who are interested, some people, for some people who want to learn in terms of training, in terms of um, being um, a certified traditional birth attendant, even if their local government is not in this category for now, mm. how they feel even reach you? Well, on a social media handle, they. Okay, so if you find us for anywhere for social media, just search for Warif NG. Once you search Warif NG, you will find us. That's W A R I F N G. You will find us. Or if you go for our website, www.warifng.org, you will see all our information there. Or you call our confidential helpline for 080. 921-0009. That's 080-921-0009. And that number, they open 24 hours 24 a day. 24 hours a day. All right, fantastic one. Oh, now they do a very wonderful project. Um, the number of lives on they impact, even past the 500 on that they do, because mm -hmm. they actually multiply and effect. Because when you train them, then go also train, train the younger ones where they're behind them. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming to the studio. Thank we wish you the very best. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.